All right, it's time to start dealing with the file handling. There's not a whole lot I can say here at the head end because there's just not that much that's interesting about these functions that we're gonna write today. It's just a lot of stuff that you know reads inputs and outputs of different kinds, and it'll be easier to explain anything that's interesting about them after I've written them. So I'm just gonna get right to it. The file reading and writing API is probably the most fundamental part of the file handling API. And in my system, I'm just going with something really simple. It's whole file operations at once. So there's no streaming, there's no reading it part by part. There's no asynchronous handling. It's just you ask for a file and get back its contents or you write to a file a brand new set of contents beginning to end the whole file. I think that doing things this way just keeps it nice and simple for all the common cases this is going to be plenty if we do ever need anything more we'll make separate calls that do the fancier stuff and figure out how to implement them correctly for that case when they come up thanks to the scratch memory system and the unicode paths that we've done previously there's not a lot of ugly hacks and corner cutting happening in these implementations they're pretty much doing what i'm going to want them to do from now on which is they take in a unicode string in utf8 convert it into UTF-16, grab the file handle that way. It's a little unfortunate that we have to convert things in and out like this, but because the operating systems don't match, we either have to have a conversion on one of the operating systems, or we have to write the entirety of every program as if the kind of string we are basing the program on will change on the fly. And that's just, I think the second option is totally untenable. It, it infects way too many other parts of the code base with this problem of, of string encoding. So we're just gonna pay the cost and do the conversions. They're just file names, they shouldn't get too long. You may have noticed that the file write API doesn't use just a basic string data blob for the output to the file, but a, a string list. And the reason it's using a string list is because the string list lets us grab memory from multiple non-contiguous locations and chain them together without having to create an, in, an intermediate buffer to store and linearize that 
data into one contiguous blob first, right? So as a feature, that's pretty helpful to have sometimes, but it's also ha handy in a lot of shorthand cases where you just have the contiguous blob and you don't want to have to push it into a list yourself to have our helper. So here it is. Here's the helper that wraps the string list and lets us just use a single data blob if that's what we have. This is the first time that the Windows API we're using is getting a little bit more complicated and hairy. It's not just a simple call that you can make to implement the thing we want. You have to do a couple of things, open a handle, work with it for a bit, close it if you got one in the first place. So it, these are the kinds of places where the best way to really learn what the weird catches are and stuff is to just spend some time reading the docs and practicing writing to the API, test out what happens with this API in isolation in simple programs if you want to learn it. Next up, we're going to deal with file properties. Okay, now we have file properties. I put these new file property types into the base layer instead of the operating system layer. It's not really that big a deal, but it's just because I tend to find that I'll end up using a lot of these types for things other than interacting with the operating system. I might make a list of files and keep it around and want to compare different times or something. And it just makes sense to me that if it's going to get used a lot outside of interacting with the operating system, that it's actually going to go in the base. It, like I said, though, it doesn't really matter. It just feels natural to me. There's not a whole lot to the implementation of this, as you can see here. Once again, that scratch pool is making it a lot easier to handle the string conversions. Uh, but besides that, there's really nothing going on. We call the operating systems function, and then we convert their type to our type. And that's just what happens whenever the API you're calling to happens to be as simple as this one. Next, we're going to do just a few odds and ends of the miscellaneous file operations that we'll want so that we can delete files and make things. Better.